to uh, navigate through this pandemic. Uh, like most people say, this is once in a lifetime uh, thing that we're going, all going through. And what I like to do is just talk about my life and some of the things that uh, I was able to uh, navigate through when times were uh, rough or when things were going on in my life and I was transitioning from uh, just say high school to college or making different transitions in my life. I'm 47 years old, um, went to University of Cal Berkeley. Uh, this is 1991 through 1994. Uh, I got a chance to play an NBA for about 12 years. Uh, I had a career, a 12 year career in NBA where I was drafted by the Clippers in uh, 1994. Um, and that was a big year for me because like we said, I got drafted. I was the number seventh overall draft pick. Um, and back then when I played uh, leaving college to go into the NBA, uh, after your junior year, you know, it was like the kids nowadays that leave, you know, straight out of high school or they play one year at Duke or any other one, any other top university and just, you know, declare for the draft after one season playing college ball. So for us back then, I played with Jason Kidd, who's a Hall of Famer, uh, and he was a year behind me. And when we... Who is that? Played at Cal for two years together. Uh, he was talking about leaving as a sophomore to go into the NBA and me as a junior. So and I know back then he had a couple of offers that he was already talking to uh, a few agents about after his freshman year because he was the number one uh, high school player back then. So, you know, for us, a lot of transitions that happen, you know, as a, in a young, young age, nothing like what we're dealing with right now with this whole pandemic. But, you know, some things that we talk about here are things that, you know, I've dealt with in terms of not knowing where you're going to go, not knowing what's going to happen, um, you know, doing different things, you know, to prepare yourself for, you know, the, the, the things that, are, that you don't know that are going on. So I'll give you a little bit more about my story. Uh, once I left high school and went to University of California, um, that is a transition in itself uh, because I'd never been on an airplane before. I, there was different things that I'd never, uh, you know, grew up doing outside of, just playing basketball. So it was a lot of different small transitions that we went through as players because, uh, you know, we just hone our crafts so and we're always in the gym. We're always uh, thinking about basketball. Like we used to say back then, we used to eat, sleep, and drink basketball, which a lot of kids understand nowadays. Uh, you know, kids that, you know, I've dealt with over the last, what, 10 years uh, in terms of just training kids and and those kids are picking up different sports at a young, young, young age to where, you know, for us at eight years old, learn to play basketball for the first time at the boys and girls club without, you know, a lot of trainers and a lot of different people that were there to, you know, be able to teach you the foundation, the fundamentals of the game, which a lot of kids had access to over the last 10 years that helped fast track uh, a lot of these kids were they able to leave, you know, from Duke after a year or, you know, forego college altogether and just go play uh, overseas, uh, either, you know, in the Euro, Euro leagues and all the different professional leagues that exist now that didn't exist back then. So just those, those different nuances of understanding who you are at that time and understanding, you know, to a small degree, what you're really bringing to the table as a player and not understanding that, okay, this is basketball, but at the same time, 
you know, everybody talks about now building a brand. And back then when we were coming up out of high school, we didn't understand those things. What is a brand? You know, we, we knew about, you know, Nabisco and Kellogg and all these other Coca-Cola, you know, we understood those as being brands at the time and not understanding that, you know, our name and what we were doing in our particular high school at the time was just doing that, building a brand and people in the surrounding local areas coming out to watch us play at our local high school, you know, and playing in our local leagues. And then therefore, you know, being able to play in bigger venues from there, if you were able to compete for a state championship, now you're, you know, known in the North, Northern, Northern California region where I grew up, uh, Fremont, California. Um, you know, there was, a couple of guys, myself, Jason Kidd, Brent Berry, uh, all from that Northern California area who followed behind the Gary Paytons um, of the world and those guys that came before us, Brian Shaw's, all those guys that, you know, came and they kind of paved the way for the area players to where we were, it became easier, like we said, to build ourselves as players and, and, not knowing what that really meant back then at the time that translate that translated into us becoming uh household names in the local area and like we said that region and then becoming local players in the state and then unlike some other guys like a jason kidd became national player of the year to where his brand at the time was something that you know he built into a national name to where he became the number one player uh, coming out of high school and just being able to see how those transitions for us weren't as easy as some people may assume it to be, you know, leaving home for the first time, um, living in the dorms, um, just all those small things that you take for granted, you know, having your mom wake you up every day, you know, for uh, school and now you're on your own and making those different hurdles and those transitions into you know, life as a, a student, a uh, full-time student at Cal Berkeley. And, you know, some of the things that you really, really don't understand uh, as an 18, 19 year old is that just because you dedicated so much time to your craft, that there was other things that were going on in the world. So my first time at University of California, Berkeley, um, we experienced, um, uh, a riot for People's Park, which was a park that was uh, right there on campus that at the time was a lot of homeless people that lived in the park and it was actually right down the street from our dorm room. So just understanding the difficulties that some people were dealing with in their lives um, as adults at the time and we're right there on the university campus uh, just going to school and seeing people in full riot gear, which you see every day on TV right now, you know, as an 18, 19 year old, you're like, whoa, what is going on? And just, you know, reminiscing back on those times and, and seeing how, you know, how life was then, you know, people were fighting for the right just to be able to stay in a park because they didn't have anywhere to live. And this is like 1994, you know, watching, you know, the police come down with the rubber bullets and the tear gas and they're shooting at, you know, at people who are just trying to stand up for their rights, which is something that we see every day on TV right now because of this pandemic. And people don't understand, they don't know what is going on, you know, to some degree no one knows what the future holds and it's scary you know and so just like for us as student athletes it was scary at the time to look out the window while we're in study hall and riot police are going down the street and you know next thing you know the 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 city's on lockdown and the the fire the fires everywhere and you know trash cans and looting's going on these are the, some of the things that i dealt with in my first month on campus at University of Cal Berkeley, you know, to where 
crazy story is, you know, us as kids, we're thinking it's all fun and games. And you see a lot of this going on right now on TV. You know, I'm watching YouTube yesterday and, you know, everybody's rioting for, you know, what happened with, uh, with uh, uh, the person in uh, Minnesota, you know, when, when, you know, things got taken a little too far and, you know, now you see every city's feeling a certain way and they're trying to let out their frustrations on everything that's gone on over the last few months, in my opinion, on, uh, and, you know, people just don't understand how fragile life is. And so people are out there doing things that they feel, you know, are justified, you know, standing up for rights and, you know, like I said, we, we had, the, you know, people stand up for the people in the people's park because they wanted to build condominiums at this particular park, you know, to, to you know, take up more space and, and people, you know, to make more money on, on housing for student housing. And they fought for that park, things happened, and, you know, the people came out in the end and won, you know, people's park back for the people. And so, you know, when those times are going and those things are happening, it's a lot of un unrest and a lot of upheaval. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be about what we do as individuals to better ourselves in times when things are uncertain. So for me as a student athlete at that time, you know, just focusing on what I can do, which was manageable at that time and taking small bites and setting short-term goals. So just coming into summer league and summer school and what they call the summer bridge program was just learning the campus and learning and daily, you know, just getting into a routine. And it's very hard, I know, for a lot of you and a lot of people to understand what that means. What does that mean for me right now here at my home in, um, in Las Vegas, Nevada? So what that means for us, hey, there's no, there's nothing going on that we can be part of. Our daily routine has been disrupted. Uh, I right now I do a lot of work with the LA Clippers, so uh, we have a lot of clinics and camps and things that we do. So I would travel back and forth to LA a lot, and then when I was here in Las Vegas, I was training a lot of kids, uh, either at the park, at a local gym, or some of the parents were, you know, more privileged enough to have a gym in their home to where I can come by and then, you know, teach the game that I grew up and that I love that afforded me opportunities to travel all around the world. And now all those things for me as an individual have been stripped away again, you know? So like we talk about that transition from high school to college, seeing what happened with people's part, transition from the NBA, I mean, from college to the NBA, during that summer as a draft pick, same thing. Okay, what's going on? What number am I gonna get picked? What can I do to better my opportunity to get chosen, you know, higher in the draft? These are things that at the time, we didn't have personal trainers that were pushing us every day that we've met with. Uh, well, all we had was our agent and, you know, you really had to go into the gym and put in this work on your own. What does that mean? That means every day, what are the things that I can control? What are the things that I need to work on? At that time for me was, hey, you know what? I need to be in the best shape of my life. I need to be in the best shape. So when I do show up for all these drills and all these things that they're telling me I'm gonna to have to do, which is pretty much a tryout for all these different teams to better my chances to be a higher draft pick. So that transition from, hey guys, I'm leaving college, I'm going to the NBA, and you know, now what? You have a three month window of figuring out, figuring out what needs to be done. Your agent's telling you, hey, stay in shape. Like I said, back then, it's 1994. We're talking about, you know, 25, 30 years ago to where now what do you do? Okay. What can I do as an individual to better my opportunity to stay in that kind of shape? Okay, you know what? Let's talk to some people that have kind of been in this situation before. Let's talk to some former players. My agent had a couple of guys 
okay, here's some things that you can do on your own to push yourself to go out here. You need to go get on the track. Back then we would run, you know, on the track, we would do uh, what they call 400s. I'm not a track star, but those are things that are more, that translate into basketball shape. So, you know, not as long like as a, as a mile run or anything like that, but it was more short burst. Everything was gonna be 30 seconds of short bursts with time to rest in between, short bursts with time to rest in between. And, you know, so now we have to go out there and you have to do these things on your own. Nobody's there to push you, nobody's there. And so you learn these different, you know, ideas of what that means to push yourself and you know you got to really dig within so i know a lot of you are really right now going okay well hey you know there's no school there's no schedule there's no everything's up in the air and me being 47 like i was telling you before i've already been through a lot of this these transitions before maybe not to this size or this scale but it's always come back down to okay look within you know, look within, let's, let's, let's find out what's the goal. The goal is, hey, this is the goal, push yourself. Hey, what can I do? Talk to someone that may be a mentor in your life. If you don't have a mentor, you know, with all the different things like we're right now on here doing a webinar, you know, so we have access to people um, either even on YouTube where people are talking and you see a lot of celebrities on YouTube and everybody has, you know, different philosophies on what, you know, they do that helps them get through whatever it might be. If it's an actor or actress, hey, they may have long stints of time in between jobs to where they still have to be on point. Same thing for us as players, you know, we still needed to be on point if it's getting ready for the NBA draft and there's a three month window and you have to eat right, you have to get the proper amount of sleep, you have to be in there lifting weights and you have to be in there running on the track, all these different things that, you know, you have to readjust your focus and focus on yourself and things that are going to be able to propel you as an individual. Therefore, you know, you can take advantage of, opportunities like this to look within and find out what you're really made of and you know a lot of this stuff is is hard because you know for us as athletes you know, yes. growing up we didn't do as much socializing per se you know we're always in the gym we're missing out on you know the friday night dance um all these different little things. We're all doing a tournament all weekend. You know, we didn't get to go to the beach and hang out with, you know, everyone at the beach. So in certain instances, you're, you're, you're losing out on small things that, you know, people take for granted and when you're focused on one goal. And that was for us to make it to the as high as the level we could, which was the NBA. And, Thankfully, we were able to do that and stay focused enough to do those things. But then you still look back on all the things that you missed out on. So as we're going through this pandemic, you know, some of the things, my son, uh, he's uh, 25 and he just got back from playing over in Greece. So some of these things that we, we take for granted, you know, he's playing over in Greece in February and March. He's, you know in a whole nother country, whole nother world, this thing hits and, you know, me and, and I'm calling him like, hey, you know, first thing first, I think you need to get back home because all these th uh, this stuff is going on. This, this coronavirus is hitting hard in Italy, which he played the year before in Italy and was in Greece this year. And we saw how hard those countries got hit you know, with the, with the uh, COVID. And I mean, he barely made it back that weekend before they shut down the borders. And we had got a lot of intel from people that we knew that kind of had an idea of what was going on. And, you know, thankfully we were able to get that word to him and he was able to get home 
that Friday before all the borders were shut down and got on the last flight and, you know, he, he, he made it back here to Las Vegas. And there was another transition for him as a player doing well, you know, enjoying life, playing ball overseas. There's three, four months left for the season. And then this, this happens and he gets hit really hard. And now he comes back and then now we're here. And, you know, first thing they tell him is, hey, when you get home, you have to self-quarantine for 14 days. And we're like, wow. So we're here at the house, self-quarantine, um, you know, because he had to come through Europe. He had to come through uh, London, Heathrow, and then all the way to San Francisco. So he's on a plane for, you know, two days in a small cabin with who knows what's going on with, you know, how contagious this thing is at that time. And, you know, you know, thankfully when he got back home and he self-quarantined and he got checked out, everything was just fine. But, you know, just looking at him and making that transition and not knowing what's going on and coming back home and, and being here and then us being here at the house and then everything's locked down. What can we draw upon, you know, from our previous and our past experiences to somewhat stay sane you know because as people know uh you know just not being able to have you know that camaraderie with your your family your friends you know we were living in a time when socially everything was you know at its peak you know every every bar was packed uh you go down the street every every grocery store you know just the social environment at the time was, you know, something that, you know, had built up over years of people being able to just, I'm out here in Las Vegas and I mean, the casinos, it was that time of the year when uh, I've been out here about two years where we know March Madness is right around the corner. Everybody's gearing up for all this, these things. And, you know, now everybody's got to stay in home and nobody can go out. You know, what's going on? What do we do? And the first thing that we were able to draw upon was like, hey, we've been here before. Hey, we've been through in situations similar to this. What can we do? And the first thing we did as athletes, as a former athlete and him as an athlete, a current athlete, um, we, we, we thought about, hey, you know what? We have a sound body that's going to help calm us down in our nerves and our minds. What can we do? right here in a small space, number one, to kind of be on some kind of schedule and, you know, work out or do push-ups or do anything, you know, to get that, you know, physical activity that we're so used to doing and getting. Uh, and, and therefore, that being our baseline, our foundation of, you know, how we're going to proceed out of this thing. You know, it was very tough. I mean, we are in the backyard with five gallon um, drums of water, you know, just lifting them and, you know, running in place and finding different ways of being able to be active without being social. And we're used to playing basketball three, four, five times out the week, you know, with all the guys and just missing out on all that social interaction with guys. So it was, it's very, very, uh, you know, one of those things that, you know, you really had to draw on it. But I think that foundation for us as athletes is just, hey, let's just be active. Let's get up. Let's get a routine going and then proceed from there. So, you know, for me as a player um, and coming from a background of players and talking to a lot of guys uh, that used to play and guys that are currently playing, these are just some of the things that we, we, we find uh and the advent of zoom where we can have these kind of talks where you know some of our buddies where we get on a zoom meeting and you know smoke some cigars and kind of talk out what's really going on in the world and how and how we can um navigate through these times so you know that's a little bit about my story um you know i did a lot of talking right now but i also wanted to have opportunity to you know, answer any questions that you guys might have. I saw someone um, posted something on the chat. I don't know exactly what you guys might want to talk about, but if you have any questions on 
you know, some of the things that, you know, that you found that can be helpful for everybody with during this pandemic that, you know, and different transitions that people have gone through, things that you've gone through uh, to kind of help you get through these times. You know, I know a lot of you are maybe student athletes. Some of you may be, you know, uh, everyday workers who are just looking for, hey, you know, I'm just so used to being here. I'm so used to being able to go clock in and do my job and, and then come home and have a schedule and feed my family. And now all these things have been stripped away from me, you know, and, you know, anything I can do, you know, to kind of help you guys navigate through that because, you know, so much of what we do as athletes, especially if we play in, you know, we're playing ball, there's so many different transitions when you don't know, but all we can do is like we say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So, you know, that was one thing that we always kind of try to live by was let's stay ready so we don't have to get ready. You know, when opportunities arise or things somewhat get back to normal. So if anybody has any questions for me, um, you know, you can unmute it and ask a question. Hi, Lamont. This is Jim Bowman. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Jim. Good. Uh, I just posted a question. I'm, I'm really curious, Lamont, if we take a look at what the culture of basketball was, you know, in the uh, mid to late 90s and the early 2000s for a player coming into the league versus maybe some of the things you see today with some of the young players coming into the league today, since you're also working with new players today, what, how's the culture changed for the NBA, you know, for a new player coming in? Oh, I mean, the, the culture for uh, guys that are coming into the NBA and guys that just in general that, that are coming in and playing, you know, so much better than when we uh, came into the NBA. Like I said, it's, you know, there's so much help. There's so many people that are there to help the guys that are coming into the league today on small things like the proper nutrition, you know, when we were playing and we just eat whatever, you know, we stopped by McDonald's on our way to practice and after practice, you know, now, well, later on in my career, when I was with the Toronto Raptors in 2000, uh, 2003, you know, we started having a chef that was in there cooking breakfast for us. And then we'd have lunch after practice and just having the proper, you know, nutrition was a big thing for us outside of, you know, getting individual trainers that traveled with us. That never happened. It was just, you know, our trainer that, you know, was with that one group, our whole team, and he would be our go-to for everything. You know, now guys have so much different access. They, I think they really understand that they are a brand, you know, they are a small business and, to be a small business, you need to hire people that are gonna help you in all the small things to help run your business more efficiently and more effectively. And guys are really understanding that now. And you know, you can look at a guy like a LeBron James and, and you can see how much money he spends just on his body, $2 million a year, just on having the right people, you know, teach him what movements that are gonna be good for him at a particular age that he's at, that way he can still be out there performing at the optimal level that he's performing at, you know, that's, that's part of what we talk about. Hey, well, how things have changed for guys, you know, in 1994, back then, if you had an ACL tear, you know, you're going to miss the whole year. Now you have guys that tear ACL and they're back within three months, you know, Achilles tear was like, you know, your career is over. And now a guy comes back after a year. So just the different nuances on how people have come on board as well and how guys have understood that, you know, it's going to take more than just me and my immediate family. Me and my immediate family. Um, and that's all we had back then. Me, my immediate family, and my agent to navigate through this whole thing. Okay, I got another question on the chat. Um, Let's see. Thank you for your time doing this. I coach cheerleading gymnastics and I am trying to find more ways 
to be creative and keep my students engaged as well as build the brand and attract future students. So far, I have been doing a lot with social media as well as reaching out to facilities to see if I can bring the program to them once we are good to go back to gyms and recreation facilities. Any suggestions? Okay. Any suggestions on how to keep your students? This is for Emily. Uh, Emily, yeah, you know, this is a hard one because there's still those question marks from parents, you know, on what am I going to do with my kids? Are they going to be able to go back to school? You know, they're going to be, I don't know if I even want them around other kids because of all these different, <laughs> you know, six foot rules and all these different things. So in my opinion is first we've got to see, you know, if that's even a possibility of people even being able to get back to sports. A lot of the kids that I was training, you know, in February, you know, they're not even thinking about sports or extracurricular activities. They're just more focused on, you know, what, you know, school is going to look like. And right now it seems like everybody's doing school online. And, you know, I think once we get back to somewhat normal activities, uh, you know, like you said, things are going to change in terms of what you can do to really uh, reach more kids and keep them uh, more energe energetic and active and wanting to be part of whatever sport it is. If it's gymnastics, or if it's basketball, if it's baseball, you know, I really believe that we will get back to some norm. Uh, some of the things that I've done in the past to really help, uh, you know, draw more kids and it's always cross training, you know, doing other things that that cross over with gymnastics or cross over with basketball that makes it more of an inclusive thing. You know, the more value you bring uh, to your particular business is more about being different from, you know, other gymnastic or other gyms so and so for example when i had my basketball program some of the things that we try to do that were a little bit different at the time was uh you know we would be able to do small tours you know whatever that means there's a lot of different facilities like the g league for us they would give us free tickets to be able to bring our kids in so we would combine all those things into the package like hey we're gonna have this day here we're gonna do things outside of just whatever sport that they're training for. So I think it's always about, you know, crossing over those uh, those activities for the parents as well as the kids to where it becomes more of a, a social thing, um, more so than just it just being a grinding uh, activity just with your particular sport. So instead of everybody just being, you know, locked in on okay how are we going to become nba superstars and it being more of a hey how we become better people you know that sells and a lot more kids and it takes a lot of the pressure off of those kids that are trying to uh participate in that sport and you know not everybody's going to make it there and everybody's going to be able to perform it well so it's always about having you know things that kind of cross over with that sport and it becomes more of a you know a social activity and I think that goes a long way. Let's see if we uh, can answer some more questions on the chat. I'm going to get back to this chat. Let's see. You're welcome, Emily. Uh, let's see. I think I missed a couple. Your thoughts on return to sports during this pandemic. What are my thoughts? Alan, um, my thoughts on returning back to the sport. Um, you know, it's tough, you know, what is it going to really look like, you know, for the NBA, for the NFL, you know, people are still buying season tickets for the LA Raiders. I mean, the Oakland Raiders that have transitioned to Las Vegas now. So a lot of people are looking at, you know, things going back to normal, but what does that mean? So it's very, very tough. I mean, I think what, 
anything is just going to always come back down to the testing and knowing who's contagious and knowing who, you know, all these different things that are going to come about. And it's just tough. It's just hard. Like we said, we've never really been here, never seen anything like this. You know, it was always one of those things that I heard as a player was like, you know, no matter what's going on, sports is always going to be here no matter what. You know, when the NBA shut down, it was like, whoa, time out. This thing is really serious. And all the other sports, Major League Baseball shut down. Oh, this is really, really serious. You know, because you always look at, you know, these activities like baseball, like basketball on a professional level. There's always about entertaining and getting people's minds off of, you know, stress from work and other things that are going on within the world. So, you know, that it still has yet to be seen. I see the NBA is talking about going to, you know, Disney World out in Orlando, Florida, and uh, starting the season back up in, you know, in July after a couple of weeks of training camp and then kind of getting the season started back up, which, you know, I can commend them on that, you know, just being able to be thoughtful and, uh, and, you know, get some kind of remnants of, you know, what sports used to be. So we'll just see what happens. I mean, that's all I can say. It's, it's really tough. Let's see, I, I have some more questions, I think. Let's see. See if I can figure out how to get back to the chat. To answer some more questions. Okay, got another question from Alan. <laughs> how would I feel about playing in empty arenas? Hey, Sylvain, good to see you. Hi, Sylvain, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, how do what I feel about playing empty arenas? I mean, you love the game of basketball, but you always do it for your fans. I mean, you get the energy from the fans, you know, when they're cheering you or even when they're booing you, you know, this, you know, you get, you know, we would say we get chill bumps. You know, every time you hit a shot, you can hear 20,000 people you know, breathing almost. And um, we'd hit a shot in an in opposing team's arena, you'll hear, ooh, you hear, ah, and that keeps you going, that gets you excited. So just playing an empty arena, that'd be like, you know, playing in practice. So I have a question from Helen Joseph. I'm not able to play sports because of several life difficulties. I'm disappointed about that. I can play intramural sports in college. How do I transition to intramural sports? The seriousness and success is not the same. Yeah, great question. You know, um, intramural sports on a college campus, we had a couple of guys like on all college campuses, um, they allow a tryout process. So even everybody that played intramurals or, you know, wanted to play at the University of Cal Berkeley, uh, they gave everybody the opportunity to show up and do a tryout. That's for every campus and college. So I would say, I don't know what the difficulties are that you're going through, but I always looked at basketball as a life sport, if, that, if you could think of it like that. You know, even after I got done playing, I played 12 years in the NBA. I also played overseas for three, four years. But I play for free, you know. I play intramurals. I play at the men's leagues down the street. I play at Lifetime Fitness. And so it becomes part of you. So I know that, that the sport has been taken away from you for whatever the reason. And I think that's a great, great thing that you're going to be able to participate uh, in the sport even if it's intramurals, because you just don't understand how big of a relief that is to be able to just participate in a sport, get your mind 
off of your studies, get your mind off any problems that are going on in your life. That was the whole reason why I even played basketball was I had a lot of difficulties in my life with my, you know, my, my, when I grew up with my, my dad and the abusive situation that he was dealing with with my mom. And so I always looked at basketball as my escape. That's my safe haven. So if you can look at the sport and transition your thought process um, on looking at it like that, I think that can be, have big, you know, big, big things for you in your future in whatever you do, as long as you're able to still compete in, in the sport that you, that you love. That's what I, that's what I always did. No worries. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Helen, for your questions. Uh, I have a question from Randall, if Randall's still on. My fear is NBA playing on top of the NFL late in the year. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, the, the, what we consider – Basketball is always going to be year round and it's become more and more year round. You can see what the NBA has been doing. I mean, the, the break that the guys get is a lot shorter than it used to be. We would get a, a solid three months, you know, because at the time I played the Clippers, we never went to the playoffs at the time. So we would get a solid three months off and our season really didn't start until November. Now the season for these guys is starting, you know, September almost beginning of October, you know, doing tours overseas. So, you know, I think basketball is one of those sports that can overlap with, you know, football. And, you know, I think the TV, I mean, you know, the TV, um, the TV gigs and stuff that they have, they'll figure out how to really, you know, make sure that football gets its time, you know, like it does every year. And then once football, is over we'll obviously see you know how far they can be able to push the season out because you know even out here during the summer you know it was like you know the summer league was big the summer league was big and you know so basketball was year round anyway So I have a question from Vern. What's up, Lamont? Took a class, SDUS, 10 years ago. Sean, you and me went out later that night. Yep, I remember. I remember. The tennis coach, that's right. Thank you. Thanks, Vern. Good, uh, good to hear from you. I got a question from SDUS. Sports sounds like your outlet for stress. How does sports help you, the physical part or the teamwork or both? Sports help me out tremendously. Um, you know, that's why I still play to this day at 47. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to, my knees are still good. My hips, my back is still good. So I'm still able to go out and participate in my sport, you know, two or three times a, uh, a week before, obviously before the pandemic. But, you know, even to this day, I have so many different little workouts that I would do on my own where I can go to a court and I can just run lines. And, you know, it becomes one of those things that, like I said, becomes the foundation, you know, of my life. You know, as I transition to other things outside of basketball where I'm training or we're doing clinics and we're doing camps in the summer, you know, even to where... I would get up early, early in the morning. I would just go to a court, shoot, run lines if I couldn't play five on five. So for, for me, that court and just being in the gym uh, has always been a thing where it becomes meditative, you know. Uh, so you go in, sometimes I would just sit there and I'm so, I've been in the gym so many years, it becomes one of those things. You can sit in the gym and just meditate and refocus on what's really going on in your life and you know I always looked at it like that and I always look at it like that to this day I go out to outdoor court around the corner since we can't go into any gyms 
and you know me and my son you know we'll run up and down the court up and down the court run some lines we'll do some basketball conditioning workouts just to get our minds off of what's going on with the pandemic and you know to stay focused and to stay in that cardiovascular health and uh you know just to 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 stay number one mentally you know in it you know in the moment that helps me stay in the moment uh people always talk about that flow state and you know the biggest thing is for me is like hey it's a new day let's be in the moment let's feel what it's like to be alive and i'm gonna run you know some six two sixes we're going to run. We have my, my son does one. We do a two-minute drill. We just run from one end of the court to the other end of the court, you know, for two minutes. And just get in that mental mind state of challenging yourself and creating that foundation um, helps you tackle everything else that's going on, you know, in life. And those things never change, you know. And like I told him, you know, every, you know, other day we we find a way to be able to be active and be in the moment you know so that's the that's the mindset let's be in the moment let's not go back you know too far in time and think about what happened last week let's just say hey we're here we're alive we're we're we're, we're here right now we're together we're healthy let's be in the moment let's just be here right now and focus on you know getting through this next two minutes you know, just get through this heat. You know, out here it's 110 degrees. Uh, so we're out there trying to get our workout in early in the morning. It's still like 80, 90 degrees, you know, six o'clock in the morning. So, you know, let's persevere through these small challenges. Therefore, we can take on the bigger challenges of life as life comes and then we can stay calm at the same time and not really be in a panic mode and really understand what's coming and understand also that hey we persevered through lots and lots of things before and we'll get through this and that's the mindset and basketball and meditating and being in that moment is the biggest thing So the question was, what other things have kept me motivated? The motivation, you know, for me is always, you know, what kind of example am I setting, you know, for say my son who's 25, say my grandson who's three, you know, what kind of example am I setting? That's kind of how I live my life. Like, you know, there's those people that consider themselves leaders, but they don't really like talking about it. So what can I do? um and how i live my life every day that's going to translate to you know my kids and my family members and my loved ones to where they can look at me and go well you know what everything that he's been through you know even if he was getting drafted number seven overall pick or you know career is over and he's trying to figure out what to do next you know he's still you know, stayed even keel. He didn't get too high and he didn't get too low. And I think those are the things and lessons that we learn from being players. You know, there's 82 games in a season. You know, if I got really, really low after, you know, a game on a Friday night, that's going to affect me on Sunday. You know, so you learn through all the challenges that you go through you know, as a player and you know, okay, just because we beat the champs, you know, on Friday and then we have a game on Saturday, a back-to-back, -back, we have to put that in our rear view, you know, and continue on and understand that, you know, that's part of it. Not getting too high, not getting too low and keeping that frame of mind becomes way more effective and it rejuvenates you. You have to wake up and be rejuvenated. Uh, I have a question from Randall. As a former player, did you react to the Kobe tragedy and how long before you 
felt more normal again. Uh, as a former player, uh, me playing against Kobe, uh, me seeing Kobe, uh, coming to the gym, we used to play at the men's gym at UCLA, uh, which a lot of people know about now because of YouTube and social media. And now you're able to see all those guys playing ball on those three courts that we played ball on and you know in the 90s and magic and those guys played on that court in the late 80s you know so it was always a tradition going to ucla's men's gym and i remember the day when i saw kobe come in with his backpack you know right after he got drafted to the lakers and he was taking classes you know at ucla and then coming in and uh, getting some more work in and now you all are able to see you know how much that he put into his craft and his mindset, even at 18 years old, you know, was, you know, something that we look back on now. And, you know, for us as former players that played against, you know, for me, I played against a lot of those guys. I played against Michael, which we saw, you know, um, everything that he's done in his career. And then they magnified that with the last dance. You see, you know, the tragedy that happened with Kobe and then them being able to, you know, go back into his career and his life and, you know, kind of see the things that he was able to do as a person, number one, for both of them, Michael and, and Kobe. You know, it always starts, you know, with their energy and what they're bringing to the table as individuals that translated into their game, that translated onto the floor, you know, to where they became bigger than life. I think even without basketball, those two people, like, Kobe and Magic and Michael, those people are special in general without even picking up a basketball, you know, because of their outlook on life and their, their, their mindset and how they attack life. And, you know, like, like Michael was saying in the last dance is just, you know, keeping that, keeping that motivation and looking 10 years down the line or five years down the line and saying, Hey, this is, where I, I see myself and this is where I see my game or my life, you know, here and, you know, trying to move in that direction and, and being positive and attacking it aggressively every day is something that you can take and look back on. But, you know, it was really sad to watch what happened with, you know, Kobe. And I, I really truly believe that he was gone at, you know, at a young age and young time and, you know, it's just, that's just life, you know, and it's just hard, but, you know, we all have to keep pushing through and then, you know, we all look up now and now we're going through, you know, our own life or death struggles with the pandemic. And, you know, it's just always about being able to look back at people like Kobe, look at people like Michael and take inspiration from that and, and understand their mindset and how they move through life and, uh, trying to adopt some of those tools to do the same thing. We got a couple more minutes. We got to, uh, we can do one or two more questions. And um, I just want to say thank you all, you know, for uh, joining in on the uh, webinar and you know, we're going to do it again next weekend. And for those that want to join again next weekend, I'll be here. Um, so we have time for one or two more questions and then we can uh, see if we can join back next weekend and come with some more questions to kind of help everybody move on. Yeah, last question. Uh, did I enjoy the last dance? Uh, yes, I did. I really enjoyed the last dance. Uh, the great thing about the last dance was I was in it. <laughs> I 
So that was fun to be able to see yourself um, in that documentary. I, I think it was like episode three when Michael came to LA uh, and played us at the sports arena. So that was uh, a great time to be able to reminisce on, you know, when they did come. And we, the funny thing is we had those guys beat. We had those guys beat that game. And you know, like I, I think if you watch Last Dance, you'll see that they were coming in on a losing streak and then they came in to play us. We started the game off fantastic. And I think they played that game on YouTube. And funny thing is I they had Michael Jordan uh, with 40, two 49 points and then they had my name on there Murray and I had like 24 that game I had a great game that game but um yeah I always reminisce on that because I could have been one of the teams that we beat you know when they won that went on to win 73 games that year so you know we missed that opportunity on a simple inbounds play but oh well <laughs> so I did enjoy it Thank you all for joining me on my webinar. Um, like I said, I'll be back on next Saturday. If we have any more questions, you know, like we said during this, this uh, our time here, you know, just like we said, just, just focus on today, focus on, you know, things that you possibly can do to create that great base and that foundation for yourself as we move on and, you know, Everybody have a good weekend. Thanks. Thank you.